Hi all. I thought I'd start a series on checkmate patterns since uh, lots of subscribers seem to be interested. There are famous chess legends that have discovered certain typical mating patterns and use them in their games. So in today's video, I'll talk about Anderson's mate. This pattern was first played by a German chess player named Adolf Anderson. Okay, here now as you see in the diagram, this mate occurs in a situation where uh, a long diagonal is open and a heavy piece like a rook or a queen can go down the edge file and mate on h8. If the h file isn't open but you have a bishop bearing down on the long diagonal, uh, look for a way to open the h file. Here white simply plays rook captures h7. After king captures rook, it's made in two as follows. Rook h8 mate. Now since you've got the hang of what to look for, let's go into some real game positions. What would you play here as white? Pause the video if you need to. Ok, hope you found queen h8, check. Bishop captures queen and finally we come back to the same mating pattern, Anderson's mate on h8. Have a look at this position. It's from a famous game played between Blackburn and Swartz. Here it's white to play. Pause the video and see if you can find the best sequence for white. Ok, first of all, a few things to notice. 1. The long diagonal is open for the bishop to occupy. And 2. White's rooks are beautifully aligned on the h file. And also after bishop h6, white threatens queen h6. But of course queen g7 wouldn't be made since g7 is guarded by the black knight. So, what is white to do here? In the game, white first played bishop f6. If black takes it easy and is passive and played something like bishop f8 for example, then white could break the pawn wall with rook captures h5 and mate on h8 in the next move. Hence black must play actively. Black decides to play knight f4. Check. Can you guess how white would continue from here? It's quite interesting. In fact, white just takes on f4. After the bishop recaptures, we use the rook battery to finish the game. And it's mate shortly. We come back to the classic mating pattern on h8. The more cluttered the board gets, the more you need to think of the order in which you move your pieces. Uh, you know, sequence is pretty important. Here again, it's white's move. There's a forced mate in 4. Can you find it? Pause the video and see if you could calculate all the way through. It's rather simple if you keep the pattern in mind. Ok, I'll go into the solution now. White starts with knight e7. Check. Black has to take here. After that, the brilliant move, queen captures h7. Another queen sack. Now after the king recaptures, uh, notice that the g6 pawn is pinned, so white has rook h5, check. And now, the king has to go back to g8, and it's mate on h8. Check out this position. This is the last one for today. In this series, in general, I plan to cover at least 10 or 12 different mating patterns including Morphe's mate and the classic back rank mate and other popular mating patterns. So if you find something unusual, let me know and I'll probably try to help you out and make a video on it. Here anyway, it's white to play. Can you see how white could continue from here? It's a forced mate in 5. I'll give you a hint. The pawn on g7 serves as a bishop. It covers two key squares, f8 and h8. Okay, I'll dive straight into the solution now. White starts with queen captures h7, check. And now black has to recapture, after which we have the discovered attack from the bishop. So f6 unleashes the bishop. Now the king has to either go to h6 or g8. If he goes to h6, then uh, rook h3 is mate. And if he goes to g8, then we have bishop h7 
and again now the king has to capture the bishop because there's no other flight square and we come back to our classic mating pattern on h8 that's all for today take care